Hey, how's it going? Parker Walbeck here with FullTimeFilmmaker.com and today I'm going to be comparing the DJI Ronin S to the Zoom Crane 3 Lab. Now this video is going to be very similar to the one that I did last year, comparing the Ronin S to the Crane 2, but Zoom has stepped up their game and addressed some of the negative issues with the Crane 2, so we have a much more competitive comparison for you guys today. We're going to be running through a few different categories and then taking them out in the field and showing you some real world performance tests to show you the pros and cons of each to help you make an educated decision on which one is right for you to buy. Now we have set up the Canon 1DX Mark II with a 16 to 35 millimeter lens on both, so exact same setup on both. And no, neither of these companies are sponsoring me. I don't have a bias towards either. I really don't even care which one wins, so please spare me the biased remarks in the comments. This video is, however, sponsored by Storyblocks. Storyblocks video is a great service for when you're in need of a quick clip for B-roll or an After Effects template or a motion background. The thing that I personally love and use most with Storyblocks video are their title animation After Effects presets. To quick quickly add production value to one of my edits. Instead of just throwing in a plain title, I'll often use one of their title animation presets, like the one that you saw at the beginning of this video, that are quick and easy to download. Then just replace their text with your text, export it out of After Effects, and drop it into your Premiere Pro timeline. Yet that simple process makes it look like you spent a ton of time putting it together and giving it a much more professional feel. So I highly recommend looking into Storyblocks video to up the production value of your videos, and you can do so by clicking on the link in the description below, or go to storyblocks.com slash Parker to learn more about Storyblocks video. But let's now go ahead and dive into our comparison. Our first category is the price. The Crane 3 is currently selling for $899, while the Ronin S comes in at $749. And right now you can actually get the Essentials package of the Ronin S, which is actually what I recommend people getting, for just $499. So either way, the Ronin S is a lot less expensive, so DJI wins this round. Moving on to the next category is build quality and design. Overall, I'd say the Ronin S feels a lot more high quality. It's all made of metal, whereas the Crane 3 has a mix between plastic and metal, like the handle here is all plastic, which kind of scares me holding up a big 1DX Mark II. Now, as far as this new design that Zune has come out with, there's just pros and cons, and we'll talk more about that in the field tests. But one of the biggest pros is the ease with which you can go from high shots to low shots, and the weight distribution in the low mode is terrific. One of the biggest cons, though, is that you can't comfortably hold the gimbal with both hands on the bottom grip and if you use one hand on each grip like it was designed to do then most of the weight is being held up by one arm which isn't ideal for long takes not to mention that because this back arm juts out so far you have to hold the gimbal farther away from your body which makes it harder to hold up for longer periods of time versus the Ronin S you can keep nice and close to your body which is a much easier position to hold for a long time also another annoying thing about this redesign is there's really not a good place to hold the gimbal when you're trying to move the tripod legs here if you hold it from here it's like like way forward heavy and if you hold it here your fingers are right where the legs fold and I've pinched my finger several times unfolding the legs and snagging my finger in the little hinge right there so overall I like what they're trying to do I like the innovation but I think there's more cons than there are pros to this new redesign so I'm gonna have to give build quality and design to the Ronin S moving on to our next category though is weight the Ronin S comes in at 4.7 pounds gimbal only and the crane 3 weighs in at 4.2 pounds not a huge difference but that's one one of the trade-offs of having cheaper build quality is that it's going to be overall lighter. So point goes to three for the weight. Next category is portability or travel friendly. One of the features that I like most about this new Crane 3 is that you can lock each of the axes so the camera doesn't move around when you're just carrying it walking around with the motors off. Also in between shots when you're just carrying the gimbal around at your side, because of the back handle on the Crane 3, it has a much better weight distribution when you're just holding it down by your side versus the Ronin S is super top heavy when you're holding it at your side. And as for packing it up in a bag, they are both pretty travel friendly. The Ronin S can break into two pieces for easy packing and the Crane 3 is a little bit more of an awkward shape as it's more of a circular form, but does still fit into most backpacks. So overall, I'm going to give portability and travelability to the Crane 3. Next category worth mentioning is the screen visibility. This is something that the Ronin S beat the Crane 2 on, but Zoom has fixed this issue with the Crane 3 by bringing the back axis lower, giving you great visibility to the screen. So no advantage to either one here. Next category is setup time and ease of use. Overall, I think the Ronin is easier to use. Balancing the Crane 3 is a little bit easier because you can lock each of the axes so that you can balance one axis at a time. But as far as using the phone app for dialing and settings, the Ronin S wins this by a mile. The Ronin S has auto-tune settings to get your gimbal dialed in for your camera setup and making any custom adjustments are quick and easy. Whereas Zune's app isn't very intuitive and it's a bit confusing. It disconnects from the gimbal a lot and doesn't always save your settings even after you push save. So it's 
just a bit more buggy. That's not to say that you can't learn it and get used to it and figure out how to use it just as well as the Ronin S, but straight out of the box, the Ronin S is easier to get set up and running and easier and more intuitive to use overall. Our next category is payload capacity. The Ronin S claims to be able to carry about eight pounds while the Crane 3 can carry around 10 pounds. And I think this is one of the things you're paying the extra cash for is that the Crane 3 claims to have much stronger motors than its competitors. But I have found that this is about as big of a setup as you can get on either of these because much bigger and it gets too top heavy. So it's not really a matter of weight as much as a matter of shape. So most cameras bigger than this aren't going to be able to balance very easily unless you do some jimmy rigging with some weird counterweights and garbage like that. But either way, payload capacity goes to Crane 3. Moving on to our next category is battery life. After having tested out both gimbals, the Ronin S will give you about 12 hours of battery life and the Crane 3 will give you about half of that at around seven hours. Their site says seven and a half. Either way, it's about half as much as the Ronin S, so the Ronin wins here. Moving on to our next category is the camera controls. This is something that's not super important to me, but is to others, is the gimbal's ability to control camera settings. The Crane 3 allows you to attach cables to your camera so that you can do all your exposure settings right from the gimbal. But I personally don't think it saves much time rather than just moving your hand three inches forward and using the monitor, but it's nice that they at least have that option. The other thing people like to use is the follow focus wheel. Again, the Crane 3 has a better follow focus wheel. It's bigger, easier to access versus the Ronin S follow focus wheel. But I personally just use the dual pixel autofocus on my Canon cameras. Also something worth mentioning is the Crane 3 has a new wireless image transfer tech that allows you to use your phone as a monitor. And for $50, you can buy this little phone monitor holder that attaches right here. So that's a nice perk. But again, I personally wouldn't use this. I've seen other YouTubers do it and there seems to be a little bit of video lag. I would rather just look at my camera monitor anyway. But overall, Crane 3 is gonna do a better job at giving you more camera controls. But let's now talk about performance. How do these stack up when actually capturing real world scenarios? Our first field test we ran was doing a straight push in shot like the one you do in a real estate video to see which one has the better lock mode for keeping the frame perfectly still during a straight push in shot. Now this one really just comes down to the settings. For shots like this, you wanna make sure you have stiff motor settings and put the gimbal into lock mode. You do this on the Ronin S by holding down the front trigger and you do it on the Crane 3 by holding down the L button on the front. For this test though, they both did a pretty good job. You can still see small micro movements on each. If we played with the settings on each of them, we could probably make them look a little bit smoother, but that's just one downside to using motorized gimbals in general is there's always gonna be a little bit of micro jitters visible when dealing with motors, but they both did pretty well in the straight push in shot, so we'll call this one a draw. For our next test, we tried out the full speed running to see which would handle the up and down movements of running full speed. As you can see from this clip, the Ronin S does have a little bit of up and down movement, but the Ronin S's shake seemed more natural looking and not as jolting as the Crane 3's. And just to make sure it wasn't a settings issue, we tried four or five different settings on the Crane 3 to see if it would look as good as the Ronin S's, but ultimately they all looked more jolty than the Ronin S, so we gave the point on this one to the Ronin S. The next test we ran was low mode to see which one did a better job at close to the ground shots. Now this is where the Crane 3 really shines, and I think is one of the main reasons for the redesign was for that easy access to quickly go from high to low as it has a much better center of gravity when holding low to the ground. With the Crane 3, ultimately I felt like I had more control over the movement in low mode, and it just felt like it was built for low mode much better, whereas the Ronin S, you have to turn it upside down, and it just felt harder to have full control over the shot. So for low mode, point goes to Crane 3. Our next test was the parallax. This is a shot I do often when I keep a subject in the same spot in the frame and move around them while panning in the opposite direction. This kind of a move again comes down to your settings. You wanna make sure to turn your stiffness down for parallax shots or else you're gonna get a lot of unwanted jitters as you're trying to pan. So with the motor stiffness on both units turned down, they both seem to work just great at getting these smooth panning shots. So I'll call this one a draw. Moving on to our next test was the 360 barrel roll. This is another one where the Crane 3 shines. With the handle on the back, it makes this move much more comfortable, again with a better center of gravity. And straight out of the box, there's a vortex mode that you can click into to be able to quickly get into that eternal rolling access mode. Whereas with the Ronin S, you have to custom program in your settings to be able to do this move. They can both perform the move just fine, but Crane 3 was much easier to hold for longer periods of time when doing this move. And overall, I thought it produced a cleaner, easier barrel roll move. So Crane 
Brain 3 gets the win on this one. Up next, we tested out how well each of these held up to some high speed wind resistance by shooting out of a car. Both gimbals held up just fine to the wind resistance. However, shooting out of the car like this was much harder with the Crane 3 because again, the back arm juts out and you can't hold the gimbal very close to your body, making your arms have to work a lot harder for those longer shots. So I found my arms getting tired a lot sooner with the Crane 3 and not just on this shot, but anytime I was doing a shot for a long period of time, I would notice that my arms would get more tired a lot sooner on the Crane 3. The Crane 2 has that big handle that comes out here. You can't hold it very close to your chest, whereas this guy, you can hold it right next to your body and kind of rest your arms against your side like this. So it just makes it a lot easier on your arms when you're going for a long time like this. So even though it's slightly lighter, I actually think the Ronin is easier to use for those long takes. So point goes to Ronin. And our last field test we ran was the sports mode to see which gimbal can track fast moving subjects the easiest. The Crane 2 didn't have a sports mode, so Ronin won this one easily last year, but the Crane 3 did include a sports mode that you can access by pushing the go button. And though it does a pretty good job, I actually still like the Ronin S sports mode better. It was just a little bit more responsive overall and easier to control the exact movements I wanted to make, whereas the Crane 3 still lagged a little bit and it seemed like there was a little bit too much unwanted up and down movement. So the Crane 3 gets closer this time, but I would still have to give this point to the Ronin S for sports mode. So there you have a look at a few tests and where each of these gimbals shine. As for my final thoughts, I thought the Crane 3 addressed a lot of the issues that the Crane 2 had. So I think this was a much more competitive test and a much more comparable option to the Ronin S. I don't think there's really a standout winner here. They each just have their pros and cons and specific things that they do better than the other. So kind of it depends on which features are most important to you. For me personally, I think two of the biggest advantages of shooting with the Crane 3 are the low mode and the 360 barrel row mode, which are two modes that I really don't use that often, whereas ease of use and better battery life and a lower price to me are more important features for the Ronin S. So if I were buying one today, I would personally still take the Ronin S, but again, that's just my personal style, my personal preference for what I personally shoot. You really can't go wrong with either of these. Once again, it just comes down to which features are most important to you. At the end of the day, they're both excellent tools that if you take the time to get the settings dialed in and take the time to practice and actually get good at it, they're both going to be great gimbals for you. Links are in the description on where to buy either of these. And if you'd like to see more gear reviews and comparisons like this, along with tutorials on my favorite Ronin S settings and other tutorials on how to become a master at getting cinematic shots, you can join our online film school at fulltimefilmmaker.com or to see a preview of what the course is like, you can sign up for my free one hour filmmaking training by clicking over here. But that's it guys. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully this helped you make an educated decision on which tool is right for you. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any further questions, please let me know.